When you go down the path of entrepreneurship, franchise ownership, which differs greatly from individual startup businesses, like if, um, is really, really attractive. I mean, it gives us a huge advantage in the franchise industry that startup businesses don't have. And that's a big advantage for us to replace some of that missing development and professional development that happens in a traditional office. Hey, welcome to What the Franchise, the regular podcast where we talk about franchising, franchise development, recruiting, operations, marketing, everything franchise related and to help people do better franchising and get off the ground faster and achieve better results. Uh, one of the topics today I want to talk about, this is going to be a shorter podcast, is, is really a trend I've heard people talking about. We've heard a lot about the great resignation and this idea that um, there are suddenly young, fewer and fewer younger workers in the marketplace and that these uh, Gen Z and early millennials um, are, are really like getting out of the job market. They don't want to work. There's lots of animosity and um, you know bad feelings from Gen X and baby boomer and older millennial people towards these younger kind of workers who who they think aren't really paying their dues. You know, like, they're not like following the path that they had to follow and were taught to follow. And I think we're in the middle of this really interesting shift in our society. And I don't know that it's a bad thing. I think what we really have to think about now is that the new type of workplace is changing and the workplace, the traditional workplace that we've all, if you've been around for a while that you're used to, may not have a place or won't look the same going forward. And it's, um, definitely during COVID when entire generations of people moved to remote work and became work from home workers where they were just really like comfortable working from home and it changed the culture of companies. You know, it went from having this collaborative in-person culture to a remote work culture where people were task oriented and, and it was a Slack culture, just Slack being the instant messenger platform that so many companies rely on today. And, you know, if you needed somebody, they were only a couple of clicks away. You know, everything we do now is, um, you know, Zoom calls and Google Meet calls and Microsoft Team calls and web sharing and even podcasts like this one have become a video component. It's almost today. When I get on a client call, if I want to talk to a new franchisee for one of our brands, um, I want to see them in person. I want to have a face to face, you know, literal conversation with that person where I'm looking them in the eye and they can see me, they can see my environment. Like I can see what their environment looks like. We can generally have a real conversation where we're obviously paying attention to each one, each other and not you know, distracted by other things. And, you know, I, I get on a group call now and if one person um, isn't on the call, they don't have their camera activated. You make up <laughs> stories about them, like they're up to something they shouldn't be, or they're not paying attention, or they're busy, um, you know, playing solitaire or doing something else, you know, instead of like being present, fully present for the, for the meeting. And I guess the issue um, that I want to talk about, and and the real trend that I'm most concerned about the future is um, for a younger generation of worker, Gen Z in particular. Um, they've come of age in an era um, where remote work was becoming fast the standard. And the idea that you get a job in the office is equal to a job you would get that was work from home or remote work, where you worked in coffee shops in the library, in your home office, and wherever you wanted to. You had this flexible kind of nature to your work, which fits into that culture really well. And, and they're excited about it because that's the future to them. <laughs> you know, like that. Why wouldn't it be? It makes so much more sense. It's much more efficient much more respectful employees, you know, sitting in an office for eight hours is a lot, <laughs> you know, like who, who should be able to make you do that when you could do all your work in a fraction of the time and still be available. Um, but the thing that I, I worry about is this whole generation of workers is probably going to wake up in a decade or maybe even sooner in five years. And um, when they were once 23, 24, now they're in the mid thirties and it's time to move up the chain um, of advancement in your company and if you were one of those workers and you've been working at home this whole time, you might suddenly find that you become a commodity, that there are younger, less expensive, less experienced people that can do your work at an equal level. And because you worked from home, you missed out on a whole decade of professional development. I mean, you literally missed out on those thousands of water cooler conversations, the lunches, the the side hallway conversations where you're working on a project and just just the idea that you're working around more experienced people, people that are older than you, people that know how to and mastered the concepts and have years and decades of experience with relationships, with solving problems, with 
handling irate customers with um, just dealing with the, the millions of things that come up in day to day business life. Um, you just don't get that anywhere near to the level that you need to be competent in a remote work job. Not, not that you can't accomplish work in a remote work job, but the the kind of abstract element of becoming a, a more professionally developed worker or executive or creative individual, the whole collaboration culture that takes place is missing. And uh, my fear for those people is that they've undervalued the in-person work and undervalued the professional development significantly. And they're just going to wake up one day and be out, you know, outplaced and they'll have to change careers. And so it's going to be a dicey kind of career path for a lot of those people. Does that mean you should go back to the office, you know, five days a week and work a traditional? No, I'm not sure that that even really exists either. Like I, I think the nature is, I think if you're going to go down a remote work path, you have to really think about like, how am I going to professionally develop? Who's going to mentor me? Who's going to be the person that's going to show me and help me solve problems and grow professionally? I'm not just going to be making widgets from home on my laptop, <laughs> working on spreadsheets and handling customer complaints and whatever it is you do, remotely coding, doing website mockups, whatever your particular job is. Um, I think this is where the confluence of entrepreneurship and franchise ownership in large part by younger owners is playing an interesting role. Um, it isn't just that Gen Z and early, you know, the younger millennials don't want to work in the office. A lot of it has to do with they just simply value business ownership more than um, the traditional office career. It could just be as simple as that, that raised on YouTube as those generations are. They're just exposed to this kind of Gary V style of idea that everybody could and should be an entrepreneur, anybody who has drive and anything you want to do in life that's really significant. Um, entrepreneurship and business ownership is the fast path to success, to, to accruing wealth, to being successful, to accomplishing your goals, to designing this life that you really want to live. And um, when you go down the path of entrepreneurship, franchise ownership, which differs greatly from individual startup businesses, like if um, is really, really attractive. I mean, it gives us a huge advantage in the franchise industry that startup businesses don't have. And that's a big advantage for us to replace some of that missing development and professional development that happens in a traditional office. So in a franchise, you're going to be working from home, obviously, because you're running your own, you're the captain of your own ship. <laughs> you know, you're, you're driving your business, but there's a social component to franchising and a definite business coaching and built in professional development angle that, that you don't have in a normal business. I've started tons of businesses in my career. I love starting businesses. I love operating and growing businesses. Um, if you've ever started your own business, you know that A, it's very lonely, <laughs> um, B, it's very hard, and you don't have a lot of places to go to get feedback, and you spend at least 50% of your time solving problems, building systems, just creative problem troubleshooting. Like It's just really frustrating. You spend an inordinate amount of time trying to fix the business and get it to work properly and function the way you need it to. So it only leaves the other half of the time to actually operate the business, generate sales, deal with people, do all the things that you really need to do. And a franchise opportunity, the, the, the real kind of overwhelming value proposition is um, you get the ability to spend 80 or 90 percent of your time operating the business. So therefore, you're much more successful and higher sales, higher margin. You grow much faster. You can scale easier because a lot of that stuff's already figured out. But more importantly, there's a social component to a franchise that uh, gives you part of a community, which is also very important for younger workers. There's a vibrant community. All of my franchise systems, the four that I operate, we rely heavily on Facebook, closed Facebook groups <laughs> where we're putting pictures up and they're open mic. And, you know, you, you can kind of like help each other support problems. It's a real joyful thing to see. Um, there's also <clears throat> lots of interactions with franchisees back to back. There's a lot of people who are in the same business you're in and will help you with your specific business in a, you know, unconditional way, which is really nice. <clears throat> there's also like a really strong component of professional development. A good franchisor today um, makes it their business to develop a franchisee into a more substantial professionally um, developed business owner. Like I want my franchisees to add units to scale that if they spend three to five years with me in my system or longer, they're amazing multi-unit owners by the time they leave. They can go to anything in franchising they want, any kind of business. They're bankable. 
they have skills, they have a resume, they know how to solve problems. They could go be an executive anywhere. And that's, I think, um, something that we need to grapple with is this idea of work from home may have some really serious drawbacks in the not so far away future. Um, and that the traditional office is not coming back and that franchise ownership might be a good option for these people as they begin to get outplaced and laid off from home instead of work from home <laughs> in the years coming, especially as we enter in this recession. But food for thought, I'd really love to hear what you think about these issues and what do you think the solutions are? Do you think you really do lose out on professional development? And do you think a franchise um, ownership path might give somebody some ability to grow professionally and open up some doors that would otherwise be closed? But take care.